In this issue of Chalk and Pixels, I'm going to show you how you can optimize your PowerPoint for the web so that students will never have problems viewing your PowerPoints within D2Web. But before I show you how to do that, I'm first going to show you a demonstration of what students will see if you have a regular PowerPoint file in D2L or if you have an optimized PowerPoint file within D2L. First, I'll show you the regular PowerPoint file. Student will open it. Granted, they have PowerPoint installed in their computer. They can download the file and open it. Now, I have audio on these slides, but in order for a student to view that or listen to it, they're going to have to click on each audio file on each slide in order to listen to your audio. Or, a student can open up your slide in presentation view, and then the audio will play automatically. That's just a couple extra steps you need to take. But now, I'm going to show you how nice and intuitive a PowerPoint file is that's been optimized for the web. I'll go back into my course, and I'll click on this file. It will automatically open up in another window, and the audio will play automatically. I can shift through the slides by clicking the forward and back button, and it will open up right within the browser. There's no additional software needed to view this file, and students will never have a problem viewing it. Now, I hope you don't think this is hard to do, because now I'm going to show you how you can do this. I'll minimize this, and now I'm going to open up Adobe Captivate 6. You can get Adobe Captivate by filling out an Ask Us request, and then you can get it installed on your office computer. Take a few seconds to load up. Now when Adobe Captivate opens up, all we need to do is click on From Microsoft PowerPoint. Now I'm going to open up my PowerPoint file and it will be converted to a Captivate project. Here's where you could change the sizes of your presentation. And I'll just leave it at the default settings and click OK. Now this is automatically going to convert my audio files as well. They will be embedded right within the presentation. This may take a minute or so depending on how many slides you have in your presentation. Now that my presentation has been converted, all I need to do is export my project. There's a couple settings that I would recommend changing, and I'll go through those very quickly. First off, we're going to change the skin by going into Themes and clicking Skin Editor. This is just where you can adjust the settings of the look of the player that will open up within D2L. So now you can see the preview pane over here. I'm just going to get rid of some of these buttons down here that make the player a little easier to use. We'll get rid of the Close button the rewind button, mute, fast forward. Now our play bar is much cleaner. We can X out that window. And now we're going to go change the publish settings. Go to file and publish settings. Here we just want to change one setting, which will make it easy to import into D2L. We'll click on the Reporting tab, and then just put a check next to Enable Reporting for this project, and then you can click OK. That's all we need to do, and now we just need to publish our project. So go up to File, and click Publish. Now we'll browse to the desktop, and then click OK. Make sure you have SWF and zip files checked, and then click Publish. Then you can click OK in the Publish Completed Successfully window and minimize this project because we're done with it. Now I'll go back into D2L and show you how simple this is to import this project. I'll go to my course home. I'll scroll down to Import, Export, Copy Components. 
Then I'm going to import components and I'm going to browse to this package. I put this on the desktop and now I'm going to look for the zip file that I created. There it is. I'll select that and open it up. Then I'll go next through the importing process. Next, import metadata, select all components, hit next, then I'll hit next again, and then I'll hit next, and I'm done. Let's go to the content section and I'll show you what we did. You see, when we enabled that reporting for this project, it enabled us to import one file and it put it right into our content section. Well, I hope you agree that this is a better way for students to view your PowerPoint files. And it will also get rid of some of the confusion students have when they don't have the proper software installed in their computers. Thanks for tuning in to Chalk and Pixels, and I'll see you next month.